yourself comfortable. Okay, we can start. Um, so, welcome to 2015. New Year has just begun and markets are moving quite rapidly. My name is Yochai Lam. I'm from ForexCrunch.com. I'll be talking about uh, themes that I see happening in 2015, what I see for currencies. Uh, just quickly about myself, I used to be a retail trader and a computer programmer. I founded Forex Crunch back in 2008. The focus of Forex Crunch is mostly on fundamental analysis, but of course, uh, there is some room for technicals as well. And um, recently, well, there are a lot of art articles on the site because there's lots going on and things to write about. Okay, let's begin. We have a busy 2015 as I see it. Uh, well, um, I don't know how many of you have been here uh, just one year ago when uh, we talked about themes for 2014, outlook for 2014, and had some predictions, so I'll just make a quick look back at them. They won't talk uh, about currencies and commodities, starting from uh, what I expect to see in the United States, the rate hike, what's going on with oil, um, euro that has been suffering a lot, uh, politics in the UK, which has a big impact on the British pound, uh, Japanese yen with all the stimulus, Australian dollar with the uh, relation, of course, to China, the Canadian dollar, which is often overlooked, but I think it's interesting, and just a touch about uh, gold prices. <clears throat> so let's look back at 2014. What I said then, this, is, this was the ranking of currencies that I had uh, in mind at the time. So regarding the Kiwi, I saw it as number one with rate hikes. Well, it didn't finish number one. US dollar, of course, was number one, but it did have some relative strength in comparison to all the others. Uh, well, regarding the Canadian dollar, I also thought that it would join, uh, enjoy the strength of the US economy. Uh, it didn't work that way because oil really killed the loonie, and that was totally wrong. Uh, US dollar, I saw it strengthening and QE tapering. It, of course, strengthened a lot and continued on rate hike prospects. Um, regarding the pound, I put it in the middle, talked about the recovery, but uh, the recovery lost some steam, so the pound had a, a mixed year. Um, regarding the Japanese yen, I saw it falling just a bit, but wow, it fell quite a lot, especially towards the end of the year. Uh, Australian dollar, uh, I th talked about Chinese situation worsening, indeed uh, that happened. And, well, it wasn't only China, to be fair, but uh, the Australian dollar was one of the weaker currencies. And uh, regarding the euro and uh, and the Swiss franc, which is attached to it basically with the peg, um, and we had a negative deposit rate indeed, the euro suffered, and, res and in addition, the euro suffered more from the talk about quantitative easing. So let's see what's in store for 2015. Some of it is a continuation, but not everything. So, United States, biggest economy in the world, most traded currency. Um, Janet Yellen said in the recent meeting that there's not going to be a rate hike at the next couple of meetings, but she did say that the Fed is going to hike in 2015. Uh, now, the, the Fed will probably wait for a press conference because it's a really a historic event, raising the rates for the first time since 2006 or <laughs> lifting them from zero since they fell to the, these levels at the wake of the financial crisis. I believe the dollar is said to continue strengthening towards the rate hike and to slide probably later on. That means up to uh, July or August, I see a stronger dollar, a continuation of what we're seeing uh, this time. But then I expect to see even more rate hikes, but it'll be uh, sort of a partial buy the rumor, sell the fact. So I see a rate hike from the, uh, the dovish Fed as a, as a good signal for the US economy. Why? Because Yellen specifically and her members, uh, her colleagues, are mostly doves, uh, especially in 2015 with the, when a few hawks are retiring. So if the Fed is brave enough to raise rates in 2015, it's a sign of strength for the US economy. Now, as aforementioned, I see the Fed uh, raising rates in every meeting beginning in June. Uh, it's like with the taper, they had a very, very long time to prepare markets. For this move, and when it begins, I believe uh, they'll do it one meeting at a time, each time 0.25%. Uh, 
and they'll reconsider sometime uh, this time uh, next year, uh, late uh, 2015, beginning of 2016. Uh, of course, uh, bond markets are not reflecting the high rates right now. There's still a lot of stimulus in the U.S. economy. The balance sheet remains elevated. So uh, the Federal Reserve stopped its QE. That means it stopped enlarging its balance sheet, stopped buying new bonds. But for every bond that matures, uh, it buys new ones. So it's maintaining its balance sheet. It's not really tightening. Anyway, as the Fed made it clear to us so many times, everything is data dependent. Um, but if things continue as they are, I see a rate hike coming in June. Um, it's hard to see it coming earlier, and some say it'll come a bit later, but I think uh, June is the, is the best time, the middle of the year, as they talked about. Um, press conference and enough, enough data for 2015 to, to make a move. Okay, now let's move to oil, which has had an impact on all currencies. It depressed. Uh, it remains depressed early in the year. Uh, also, today it fell, continued its falls. Uh, it began falling in the middle of 2014, then accelerated with the OPEC decision in late November on Thanksgiving Day in the United States. It's now WTI at around $52 or 51 last time I took a look. And, and I think that 40 is sort of the line in the sand. But eventually, uh, oil can self-correct. Um, I see uh, less production because of lower prices and more demand because oil is cheap, the gasoline is cheap. Eventually, it'll push prices back up. I believe that the sweet spot for the United States is around $65, $70 per barrel because uh, it's important to remember that while uh, lower oil prices leave more money in the pockets of consumers, um, some people are going to lose their jobs in the shale and fracking uh, oil industries in the middle of the United States, so it's not all good for the United States. Um, so th this could, uh, well, anyway, I believe we'll see volatility continuing uh, also in oil prices. It's important to note the impact that it has on the U.S. economy and, of course, the countries producing oil. Specifically, Russia, uh, energy, including oil and gas, is 63% of Russia's exports. The long term, uh, uh, if Russia suffers a uh, long term uh, a low price of oil, uh, it causes problems for Russia. And problems from Russia is problems for the rest of the world. So Russia could cut oil and gas exports, lift prices, and, and pressure the world. I think uh, Russia seems now down. But uh, I think it will play a big role. Uh, it's going to continue being an important theme for the U.S. dollar, for Europe, for many other currencies throughout 2015. So I took oil as the second thing, even though I focus on currencies, because I think it's going to play a major role in the year. Okay, now let's move on to the euro and the ECB. Unfortunately for me, uh, we have only eight meetings this year, once every six weeks. Uh, but I think we're still going to see lots and lots of action from euro dollar uh, for the uh, common currency in general. The situation isn't good. Uh, European economy is still stuck in stagnation. Uh, it's due to lack of reforms, uh, the tensions with Russia, which have an impact on Germany, and the strong euro, which makes European exports, which made European exports uh, too expensive, not attractive enough. Now things have changed, as we all know. Euro dollar was at 140 just at the beginning of May, and it fell since then. It's now below 120 in the, with the avalanche of the recent days. And there are good reasons. There's danger of deflation, and the ECB tried doing a lot, negative deposit rates, um, buying uh, asset-backed securities, ABS, lending money to banks with the targeted uh, loans, the TLTRO, which are loans, they're not... Uh, direct QE, and I think uh, Draghi and his colleagues made it clear that uh, QE is coming. What is QE? Quantitative easing. It's what they did in the United States and in UK, the UK and in Japan. It's basically uh, the central bank printing money to buy bonds. In, in Europe, of course, it's complicated because it, there are 18 different countries, and um, you have to... Uh, find the right political balance. The Germans are against it. We talked about it in the past, and we're going to 
course, dive into it in the future. But in any case, it means uh, devaluing the, the impact is devaluing the euro, and um, and I think they'll move uh, with it on January 22nd. That's just uh, two and a half weeks from now. Uh, also, another factor weighing on the euro is Greece. Uh, that's in the shorter term in January. We have elections on January 25th, just three days after the ECB decision. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of action at the end of this month. Uh, the anti-bailout, anti-austerity, radical left party, Syriza, is set to win. But polls are very close. I don't know if you've heard the recent news, but Germany is talking about uh, an exit of Greece from the Eurozone as vegetable. I think it's part of the pressure they're trying to put on um, on Greeks to vote for the mainstream parties. Here we have in this picture on the, uh, actually on the right, we have uh, Tsipras, the leader of Syriza, the radical left, and then, and the other guy with the glasses on the left is Samaras, the center-right prime minister. Anyway, fears are mounting, even though Greece is a small country. But uh, we might have a uh, stuck, hung parliament, another round of elections later on in March, perhaps. And um, it's going to stay in the news, I think, uh, throughout at least the first quarter. I believe eventually we'll have some kind of compromise between everybody, and, and Greece will stay in the Eurozone, but anything, anything is possible. Uh, not yeah, things can get out of control uh, always, so it, it's a factor weighing on the euro at least at the beginning of the year. Another thing we have to look towards the end of the year is Spain. There's a new political party called the Podemos, which means we can. It's challenging the mainstream parties. It um, they had uh, big gains in local elections in the European Parliament elections, and it already resulted in a better confrontation of corruption from from the mainstream center-right uh, PP party. Um, I think uh, towards the elections we'll have more uncertainty, but eventually if this party, Podemos, gains a lot of seats, we'll have the center-right and center-left parties uh, perhaps do a grand coalition. Perhaps not. it will not be the only country where this uh, happens. So that's sort of political risk to look uh, into throughout the year. But what 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 are we going to see for euro dollar? I think it has more room to fall. I don't see it reaching a parity, but now we're at 119. Uh, I think it could reach 110, 115. But then everything that's working now against the euro could turn to the other direction. It means lower oil prices still help the consumer, even though they push prices generally lower. Um, a weaker euro that is a result of uh, all the stimulus from the central bank and perhaps the um, um, disappearance of Greek problems, everything I think will eventually lift the euro. And together with what I said beforehand about the dollar, that at some point we're going to see after the rate hike some kind of slowing down in the rises of the dollar or perhaps a big correction. I think uh, all in all in the second half of the year, maybe euro dollar will make a big comeback. So I think there's still more room to the downside during the first half and then a big comeback in uh, the second half. Uh, so I don't think it's a one-way street for uh, euro dollar. Uh, United Kingdom, uh, it suffers uh, from the weakness in the eurozone. Recently, we had a downgrade um, of GDP in the UK to uh, just under 3%. Um, we have elections in May. That's here are four political leaders. Uh, polls are so mixed, we could have a hung parliament that also could result here in a grand coalition between uh, current Prime Minister David Cameron and um, leader of Labour Ed Miliband. Uh, but we have also the UKIP anti-EU uh, party and also the Liberal Democrats uh, competing for seats. Uh, so I think it could be quite messy. Now, the Bank of England, Mark Carney, uh, will probably not want to raise the rates uh, before the elections. First of all, because there is an economic slowdown. And uh, he would not like to be seen as political, as, uh, for instance, harming the, the current government, for example. Um, so uh, he has all the reasons to wait. But eventually, I think uh, when the clouds become uh, move away, uh, we, we will remember that the UK economy is still doing quite well. It had a very, very nice run in 2013 and 2014. I think we'll get an indication for rate hike in August, and perhaps 
see uh, rate hike in September. We have inflation reports in the UK every three months. That's February, May, August, and November. I think we'll see some optimism in August and perhaps rate hike in September, maybe October. But also here, like in the United States, well, like everywhere else, everything is data dependent. So I believe the um, uh, pound dollar will be pressured, uh, but eventually uh, it'll recover probably late in the year together with slowdown in USD strength. So um, I see it, uh, the year is mostly negative for, not half and half, but mostly negative for pound dollar, and then I see it recovering somehow. Australia, um, it's a very popular currency pair in recent years, and I think for very good reasons, it behaves technically very well, the Aussie dollar. Uh, Australia's number one trade partner is China. China is slowing down. Now, I don't think it really matters why China is slowing down, because um, either it's engineered, uh, not engineered, under control, not under control. It might be due to um, the Chinese government trying to tackle corruption or trying to tackle pollution. The bottom line for Australia is there's just less demand for Australian exports, such as iron ore, uh, copper, and uh, other metals. Now, we already had the big headlines in the past, the end of the mining boom and all this stuff. Um, I think China will only do small things to fine tune the slowdown, such as cuts in the reserve uh, rate ratio or um, all kinds of small moves. But in general, it has a clear direction it's rebalancing from. Um, uh, investment and export to more uh, consumption, less building with, and less building materials are needed. Australia, this, at the current point, is too dependent on China. Even if oil makes a comeback, if you, even if it self-corrects, I think that copper and iron ore could still remain depressed. So, and I'm not, I think, for Australia, we'll probably see a one-way street down throughout 2015. Aussie dollar lost a lot, and I think it has more room uh, to go. Uh, another interesting point about Australia, it has elevated housing prices. Um, now, the Reserve Bank of Australia has refrained from using macroprudential tools, such as limiting, limiting mortgages, let's say, to 60% of the house or things like that. That means that it kept interest rates high to curb the housing bubbles, some say. But eventually the RBA, uh, Glenn Stevens, there in Australia could take a page from uh, uh, his neighbor in New Zealand, introduce new tool tools, and perhaps cut interest rates also in Australia. Uh, I think markets are looking for two rate cuts. I think we could see even four. And uh, recently the RBA talked about a target of uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, sorry, uh, but I think it could fall even uh, further. Uh, it could even reach parity with the um, New Zealand dollar, and I see it going just down and down. Japan, I know many of you prefer trading uh, crosses and not dollar yen. Um, well, at least that's what I see on, on my website. Um, we had two very, very turbulent years in Japan since this guy in the corner there, Shinzo Abe, became prime minister. Recently he called another round of elections and he won them quite easily. Um, what he did mistakenly, well, we all agree on it now, but not everybody thought about this earlier, is that he raised the tax, um, the sales tax in April 2014. It sent the economy into recession. He had to push back, um, uh, push back the next uh, tax hike and inflation is just too low. I'm not talking about oil, I'm talking about what's called in Japan core core inflation. That means excluding quite a big variety of volatile um, components, including fresh food, for example, and, and, oil, and oil, of course. Uh, so it's just too weak. Now, the new government formed um, introduced a new fiscal stimulus plan that comes in addition to the huge monetary stimulus that we have in Japan. Now, for now, lower oil prices could mean that Japan could allow for a weaker yen because Japan imports a lot of oil after its horrible disaster back uh, almost four years ago in Fukushima. 
um, that catastrophe with the earthquake, tsunami, and and the nuclear disaster meant that Japan uh, closed down a few reactors and now relies on on oil. So, but as while oil remains weak, it can suffer a weaker yen. Um, but even if oil recovers, and they do see it recovering, I think the Japanese economy isn't doing so well. It'll, uh, these steps won't work that quickly. And I believe the dollar yen could rise throughout the year. It could be one-way street. I think there's room for 130, 135 without really turning back. So even if the US dollar does stabilize later in the year, um, the Japanese yen will not be the currency enjoying the biggest recovery. Let's uh, frame it that way. Okay. Uh, Canadian dollar, I think this pair is sometimes uh, overlooked at. It suffered really badly from lower oil prices, um, but the economy does depend a lot on the United States. So, of course, if oil falls up to $40, and we talked about that in the past, it could weigh on the loonie even further. We've seen uh, the Canadian dollar fall even more as oil fell even more, but I still see that as only a small part of the story. Uh, Canadian economy is doing quite well. Unemployment rate is 6.6. Um, there is domestic demand. There is foreign demand. Um, I think that with an improvement in the United States continuing, it could have a bigger and better impact on the Canadian dollar. We do have elections there in Canada in October, but no real shocks are expected. Inflation, contrary to many other countries, is really not too low in Canada. It's around 2%, even 23 sometimes. So there isn't really too much to worry about. So this is my sort of bold call for now. I think uh, maybe dollar CAD will rise a bit more with oil prices, with a stronger US dollar against across the board. But eventually I see it as making a huge, huge comeback. And perhaps it could even return to parity, dollar CAD towards the year end, towards the end of the year. That's the sort of my boldest call for 2015. Um, now let's move on to gold. Um, gold actually um, was stuck in 2014. It lost just 1%. It moved a lot more. It, it was more volatile than many currencies until August. But uh, many saw gold in the past as a hedge against inflation. The case for that is basically lost. Inflation is too low all over the world. Uh, and tightening is on the way in the United States. Uh, QE was uh, correlated with uh, the rise in uh, gold prices. Um, after falling uh, in 2013, it stabilized in 2014. And now I believe it will continue falling, especially once the Fed begins tightening. So even if the US dollar doesn't uh, rise too much later in the year, I think the, I think the price of gold has room to fall. It's, of course, uh, the price of gold is supported by natural demand. It means uh, jewelry, some industrial uses, gifts and weddings. Uh, th there is demand for the real thing. But um, I believe it could fall uh, quite a lot, maybe t towards uh, 1,000 uh, during um, 2015. Um, so that's about gold. OK. So now that we've talked about all currencies and also gold and oil, uh, let's make some kind of trying, well, an attempt to make a prediction for 2015. And just a few warnings, it's not a trading advice. I will follow up at the end of the year or early next year, like I did now with what I got wrong and what I got right. Of course, I'd like to hear your opinions. We will soon have the Q&A session. So let's see what... Uh, what we're talking about here. So I see the Canadian dollar as number one. Um, once oil stabilizes and bounces, and especially on the strength of the US economy. Um, second in line is New Zealand dollar. We didn't uh, dive into that, but I'll just mention that uh, New Zealand's exports are mostly milk and also other dairy products and also other agricultural products. So. Demand for that in China and Korea and basically all over the world is much more stable than demand for iron, for oil even. Uh, people always need to eat. 
So um, New Zealand dollar was one of the strongest in 2014, also thanks to a strong economy over there and to good management of the housing market. And I think it'll have a relatively good year in 2015, um, coming in at second place. Um, Euro, I see it coming as a third, uh, suffering a big fall, an even bigger fall than, than current prices, but then making a big rebound and eventually beating the US dollar. Just rem remind uh, what we what I talked about beforehand. Um, we have everything now very dark skies in the middle of the winter in Europe, uh, playing against uh, the single currency. We have weak oil prices that mean deflation, that mean uh, the ECB must act. We have, of course, the ECB action, which would be big in terms of QE, which was delayed for a long time. Uh, and we have some lack of structural reforms. And we have um, political uncertainty, especially in Greece. I believe things will find some stability after. Uh, it's going to get worse before it's going to get better. Um, it's the world's most popular, popular currency pair. Now, Fourth, in the middle, I see US dollar coming just average eventually. So I see strong seven, eight months uh, toward, with the expectations for the rate hike. And then uh, not immediately afterwards, but a month or two afterwards, uh, I see it uh, slowing down and beating some currencies, losing to others. A pound, I see it falling, uh, losing eventually to the US dollar. Um, um, recovering some of the losses later in the year, but uh, still losing to the US dollar, mostly because of politics, because of uh, uncertainty towards the elections, and I believe uncertainty immediately after the elections, when the results are probably said to be quite mixed and uncertain. Uh, sixth place, um, the Japanese yen. I think that monetary stimulus weakens the yen, uh, fiscal stimulus weakens the yen, and um, the basic stagnation of the economy, the basic stagnation of demographics in Japan, with uh, the population not really growing or getting older, uh, I think we'll see it uh, way on the end. And um, last in the list, Australian dollar, uh, because of China and because of a not so strong Australian economy, Currently, it is strong, but, I see, but it's in a path of deterioration, which I think will not end. I see the Australian dollar uh, coming in last, lagging, losing to all the other uh, currencies here on the list. One currency that is missing is the Swiss franc. I think that with current uh, price action, in, I mean, inflation in Switzerland um, is too low. So the Swiss National Bank is said to keep the peg for another full year at least. Uh, Euro Swiss at 120. That means that uh, and the Swiss franc will move um, mostly hand in hand with the euro. And well, that's a currency I don't I don't really like. Of course, it's exciting to see dollar Swiss back at parity, but uh, with so much intervention from the Swiss National Bank, um, this currency is not on my radar. All right, so this is the ranking. CAD, uh, Kiwi, Euro, um, Greenback, uh, the Pound, the Yen, and the Australian Dollar. Okay, oops, what will happen in 2015? It's time for questions. Let's see if uh, we have some questions that already came beforehand. No, not yet. Well, I encourage you to ask. I can, uh, in the chat box here, um, I accidentally left the slide unchanged. While I wait for your questions, I'll thank FX Street, of course, for hosting the webinar. It's always a pleasure. Um, we have, of course, lots of other interesting webinars. On uh, Forex Cruncher, welcome to visit the site, join the various newsletters. Here are some contact details. And a few months ago, my colleague and associate and friend Lior Coyne from Trading Energy and myself 
began the Market Movers uh, podcast. Of course, there are mobile uh, apps for Android and for iOS. You're also welcome to download them. Ah, there's, of course, uh, an app for iPad. And um, waiting for your questions. Anything you'd like to uh, expand about, talk about even another currency if you wish. We have a few more minutes. We can profit more, but we can also lose more in uh, currency trading. So, um, see people sort of raising their hands. Can, can you guys use the chat or, I mean, ask questions without raising the hand? I don't know how to. I see Zell, Buntan, with the hand up. I hope there's no technical problem that prevents you guys from asking questions or DJI and DAX 30. Okay. Um, I don't follow stock markets very closely. In the United States, in uh, during 2014, we had gains in, in indexes of around 10%, between 9, 12, things like that. Uh, some say uh, stock markets are frothy, bubbly. Of course, we have uh, bad stocks, perhaps, uh, we have some bubbly tech stocks. We have maybe, of course, uh, oil stocks, especially those small producers that are, took uh, big loans might be in trouble. But there are companies that have um, really okay valuations in historic terms. If we, um, of course, the S&P has reached all-time highs during the year, but if we look at inflation, it's not that mad. So... I guess we might see some kind of correction in the United States, especially um, towards the rate hike. But once the rate hike does come, we might see the stock market take a hit. But a few months afterwards, I think markets are set to understand that if the Fed, the dovish Fed, raises the rates, it's all right. Uh, it means that the U.S. economy is doing well. So yeah, uh, there might be more incentive to invest in solid uh, and putting the parking the money in the bank with a higher interest rate and trading stocks in some cases, but in general, there will be quite a few good stocks uh, left out there. Regarding the DAX, the German uh, index, I haven't followed it at all, um, but I must say that one one of the, as I see it, one of the benefits of QE in the eurozone will be regional stock markets because if the ECB, the European Central Bank, buys bonds, uh, the money is set to go elsewhere, uh, like what we've seen in the United States with QE. So eventually, um, I think stock markets, including in Germany, also are set to be okay, and um, especially for companies exporting. 
because with the lower euro, we're going to see uh, these kind of companies make uh, better profits and sell more uh, thanks to a lower euro. So I, I'm, I think there's more room for, uh, I mean, maybe the German stock market could outperform the U.S. stock market, but um, I focus on uh, currencies more than on uh, on uh, on stocks. Um, hope that answers the question. Um, more questions? We have a few more minutes. Here's again the ranking as I see it in 2015 of currencies. And as aforementioned, I see um, the current uh, US dollar strength continue for some time, but afterwards I believe uh, yeah, another question. Do you think oil has bottomed out? No, I don't think oil has bottomed out. I think we might see another um, another fall. It might reach $40 on the WTI, and also Brent has ro more room to fall. Um, but eventually, as we've seen in the past, um, oil is set to self-correct, because when we have lower oil prices, we have less production. We have more demand because oil is cheaper, especially in the United States where they drive their cars everywhere. So um, there might be another washout, but I believe uh, prices will eventually rise. Any more questions about Euro dollar, about, uh, about the pound, about the yen? Anybody here trading uh, gold? Anybody trading the Canadian dollar? Or am I the only fan? Yeah, gold. Okay. Uh, anything specific about gold? Or I, well, I'll repeat in the meantime. Um, gold mm, fell in 2013. Stabilized in 2014, I think it's ready for another fall. This year, with the lack of inflation, with the lack of stimulus from the United States, uh, it does have support from natural organic demand, such as uh, I know that Indians uh, usually buy gold for weddings. Uh, jewelry, um, gold is used in jewelry all over the world. Um, so I doubt we'll see it fall below 1,000 which is sort of a very, very, very round number, but uh, it carries, gold carries no yield, and especially if the United States uh, begins hiking, we, there is room for uh, falls in the price of this precious metal. Any more questions for the next trading session, for the next quarter, for 2015? Anyway, I'll thank FX for hosting the webinar once again. <clears throat> wish them, wish you, wish everybody a successful, enjoyable, and happy 2015. You're welcome to visit my site, forexcrunch.com, sign up to the newsletters, sign up to the Market Movers podcast, 
I have a weekly show in which we talk about markets every week. Uh, thank you very much. And here are some contact details if you'd like to follow up. And you're welcome also to download the Android and iOS apps. And um, that's it, I guess. put up the currency ranking once again. If anybody wants to agree or challenge that. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Oh. How, ah, okay. Last question. Uh, may I know how you read the ranking? Well, I think it's from top to bottom. So I, I see the Canadian dollar is the strongest one, uh, then the uh, New Zealand dollar, then the Euro, US dollar in the middle, uh, then the pound, then the yen, and then the Australian dollar. Uh, so the Canadian dollar I see as the strongest and the Australian dollar as the weakest. Uh, but of course, that's my prediction. It's not uh, trading advice. As you've seen, I was right on some things in 2014 and wrong on others. But this is sort of uh, food for the thoughts. All right, everybody. Uh, our time is up. Uh, thank you very much. And I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you, FX Street. All of the rest of the awesome uh, uh, webinars that FX Street hosts with some great presenters. And um, happy trading. Thank you very much.